y'all. I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show sure did. Because we both to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. Hey guys, it's Caroline. And this is Bloody Happy Hour. And it's Thirsty Thursday, so we hope that you're thirsty. We hope that you are bloodthirsty because y'all are now officially our... Bloodies. Our bloodies. Bloody gang. You're part of our bloody gang and we are so excited. We love it every time you press play to listen to our voices. We do. And what you should do right now, if you haven't already, is go rate, review, and subscribe. Or tell your friends or family or anybody. Actually, do all the above. Yeah, no do or. all those things. No or. Um, we just need to start telling them what exactly to do. Yeah, I mean, That's maybe what, they're like you and they like to yeah, be told exactly. I love Should we do bullet, like number it off? One. Yeah. First thing, rate. Yep. If you got Apple Podcasts, all you do is press the five stars, right? Yes. Review. I think you do it on multiple platforms, but only know Apple and Audible. Review. Then it says write a review. You have to click that. Write something, anything. And then once you listen, press that plus sign or the check Mm -hmm. sign. That's the subscribe button. And that means all of our episodes will pop up. Um, and then all you got to do is click on it Yep. to listen. So How rate, review, subscribe. How easy is that? You do not even have to have a good IQ to be able to do that. You sure don't. Speaking of IQs, the serial killer I'm talking about. What? has got some IQ issues today. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um. But did he watch, did, was he given porn as a child? He was not. Mm. He breaks all the rules, so I can't wait to tell you about him. And we are actually going to get right to him after Caroline tells us about this new missing person. Listen. I think she's pretty obsessed with <laughs> missing, missing people. white girls. L- listen, <laughs> we got another missing white woman, so you know it's going to be a serious case. Oh, gosh. You know it is. So this lady, her name is Heidi Plank. And I. so she lives in the L.A. area, and... She's a she's 39 and she had gone to one of like her son. Her, she's a 10 year old son. She went to his football game. Well, she brought her dog with her to the game and her ex-husband was already there at the game. And, you know, they go watch the game, whatever. Normal stuff. Well, she leaves randomly with the dog around halftime, which is not normal. I think I just figured out you only read this article because it mentioned a dog. It's possible. (laughs) So they leave the game at halftime and the ex-husband was like, oh, that was kind of weird. Like she usually stays for the whole game. So her and her ex-husband have like 50-50 custody. So she, uh, that's why she wouldn't have taken her son with her. So then um, a few, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So a few hours later, the dog is found in an apartment complex, this like high rise apartment building on the 28th floor. Like apparently this lady has nothing to do with this apartment complex. And the, the people who find the dog are like, uh, we don't like, they didn't know what to do because they just kept, they just kept the dog until somebody claimed it. And then meanwhile, the nobody really knows that she's missing. Cause it's just a few hours after she left the game Yeah, or whatever. Okay. And so, a few days go by, she doesn't pick her kid up from school. So then the husband is, or the ex-husband is like, okay, now this is weird. And then they figure out all the pieces. They end up locating the dog, but she is nowhere to be found. She gone. She's gone. Her car is like, there's no car or her, like she has a cell phone, like a work phone. And that's not found. A computer's not found. They go to her, her house they do find one of her phones but they try to track the her other devices and all of the location services are turned off what's the sketchy part of it i feel something the sketchy sketchy part part is is the husband believes the ex-husband is like 
thinking there's some foul play. Okay. And he had, a few days before all of this, got a call from the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, and it was a completely random call. He had no idea what it was about, and they were asking about Heidi's boss. Okay, so Heidi works for this place, uh, Camden Capital Partners, whatever. She works as, like, a controller, executive assistant, and this is like an investment mm, company. Okay. So apparently this company is under investigation by the SEC for securities fraud. They're stealing money. They are stealing money. Mm. So apparently the the her boss and her boss's partner had stolen like forty three million dollars oh from their clients. Well, there you go. And so that's that's all we know so mm. far. There, so, but there is there's there's got to be video footage of her at that uh, at apartment because it's like I mean it sounds like it's a nice bougie apartment. Oh yeah, it's I probably mean, like not easy to get to yeah, to so, get to the floor. Yeah, you have to like so show somebody your invited card. there. Yes, they need to like dig, dig, dig to see if that apartment has any ties to this company. Like, do they own some of that building, some of that property? Does somebody own an apartment there? This is a, a, I mean, what do you think? You think that she knew about something and she was about to like testify, and they just like. But, well, let's but get rid did, of her. did they just let her keep her dog alive? I mean, I know They're that probably usually, dog people. They're probably like, we can kill her. But most get, dog people put dog lives before <laughs> all dog life. lives matter. <laughs> so they were probably like, leave the dog. Somebody will take care of it. But we need to get rid of her. I, it sounds like white collar crime turned red collar. Let's just Absolutely. see how it is. Maybe we'll know more. Um, okay. So that, yeah, her name is, uh, Heidi Plank. Okay. So Heidi, I'll keep Heidi, y'all Heidi. updated. Well, I'm sure Nancy Grace will be talking about it. Oh, I just listened to the episode. <laughs> All right. So if y'all are ready. Okay. Wait, what are you, are you watching anything really quickly oh, or what's, um, what's, what's first, a little recap? I'm drinking some truly. I didn't even ask what you got in your cup. Oh, I got Skinny Girl Margarita. Okay, Skinny Girl Margarita. I got some Truly. You may not be allowed to drink Truly because I had to edit out a lot of belches on the last episode. I had some good ones. It was the bubbles. It was really (laughs) uh, amazing. I was like, this is great. No, have a true, have 14 Truly's, please. Oh, I'm sure I will. Um, So I am actually on a pause on a couple of my shows. I don't know why. I just haven't turned it on. I've, we've been obsessed with HGTV. So oh. I didn't. Uh, listen. I can't. We're about to do. I can't with Sweet Pea. <laughs> I it's HGTV. I was, I was like, are you coming out of the closet very, like, very slowly? Very slowly. No. He's serious about a reno that we're going to do. So he's, like, watching it and probably about to get Pinterest. Oh, my god! But I am 100% excited about my Dexter coming back. So I hope I got some Dexter lovers out there. We thought he was gone forever. And if you really love a show, when the show is done, a piece of your heart is just like locked up and hidden away. Right? Yeah. Dexter yeah. was one yeah. of those shows for a lot of, for me, but for a lot of people. And now he back. I can't believe In three it, days. It was like how long of a break was that i don't know he i mean serial killers are dormant for a long time that's true he was lying dormant but he is awake and i just cannot wait well i'm watching um the impeachment Mm -hmm. an american crime story which is on fx and it is all about the lewinsky clinton situation oh my goodness and it is so interesting because i mean it all happened whenever i mean i remember it all but Mm -hmm. i was how, old, how what, I mean, what was the crime getting a blowjob that's not a crime i hate when people act like they don't well, give head no, it, i don't it wasn't a crime uh, well it was it was a scandal but scandal. also according to the show like she was so in love with him well she was zero years old i know but it's just like crazy because you just don't know because i mean I, I felt like i was how old were we i wonder how old was he like was it dead? he was like 50 something she was 20 something oh okay i think and so 
I think the crime was that obviously he's a president and he's like, do because he like did stuff in Arkansas with these other chicks or he got accused of it all. Yeah. But um, it's the it's the this Linda Tripp. Oh, I remember that name. I know. She's the one that was the best friend. She was the one who had like had worked at the White House and got like put at the Pentagon and then Lewinsky got put at the Pentagon and then they started becoming friends. And then Monica started like confiding in Linda and was like just telling her all the tea, like spilling the tea. Yes. Too much tea she spilled. And she yeah. And then Linda was like, she's trying to like be on the come up and she's trying to get some money she's trying to make she's trying yeah. to get a book deal but then the people are like you don't have any your, your story is not good and so then she found out that Lewinsky was banging not banging or whatever blowjob the president yeah. and so then she got to like talking to her and then started recording their phone calls mm -mm. and so then she like turned the, those tapes over and like Lewinsky had like signed some she like got subpoenaed and she signed it saying like that she didn't like that she was not involved with the president. So basically she like lied under oath or something. Okay. So what's our story for today, April? Okay. I can't wait. Um, I am excited to bring you guys, I think the first black serial killer that we have talked about. Is it? Hey, I don't, we haven't, we haven't, we've been picking on all the white serial killers. So I'm going to bring you a black one because, uh, we do not think that they really exist. Like, we know there's a couple of them, but there's a whole lot more than you realize. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. Um, his name is Carl Eugene Watts. And I have to tell you that he breaks every serial killer rule ever. What we know about serial killers or what we thought we knew, especially back then, he broke all the rules. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell, what's she doing? You bring getting out your notebook. I, I'm oh, going to okay. write in case I needed so I can remember all the people. <laughs> I don't, I ain't you know I'm getting out my notebook because you're about to make me close my computer. Yep, close the computer. Full attention. Okay. This guy's name is Carl Eugene Watts. I only found out about him because one of my book club members were like, let's talk about him. He's from Texas. Got a book. Book's called Hidden Brutality. It's like barely a book. It's like a an easy reader it's like 70 pages caroline like oh, this is a book yes up your alley um very easy read um but a good book so we did it for my book club we talked about him carl eugene watts baby hey. was born in colleen texas in hey. 1953 here we go his daddy was a soldier so they lived on the fort hood base so you might recognize fort hood if you've heard the vanessa Gillian story that I don't know how you haven't. It like spread like a wildfire, mm -hmm. like Gabby Petito's story. Um, Daddy's name was Richard. Mama's name was Dorothy. They were married. Like she was a high school art teacher. He was a soldier, like normal family. Lived in Fort Hood for a little bit, but they ended up missing like up north and they went to Virginia. And so back at home in Virginia, they found out they're having a little sister come, like mm -hmm. is coming. And so he's going to have a little sister, but I guess daddy did not like, like this idea. So he basically packed up and like threw him the deuces, <gasps> didn't leave a letter, like didn't leave a, um, it's not a voicemail, uh, no, <laughs> what's it called? No answer machine message. Cause this is, you know, a long time ago. He didn't do any of the, he just like left, didn't tell anybody bye. He didn't take anything, he just gone. Didn't take anything. And so they still to this day don't know why he left or where he went or, you know, as of this book was written. So mom was like, I can't do this by myself. I got two kids. By this time, what's his name? Uh, Carl is only two years old. So it's not like he's, this is not going to be a big impact on him. Like yeah, you yeah, don't even no, know your daddy, yeah, no, basically. No, no. Um, so she moves to the Detroit area because she has a bunch of family. So they're in the Detroit area now, right? Because they have family around. And so he goes to see his grandma. He goes to see his aunts. Mom's working as a full-time teacher. Like nothing to me seems sus. He finds out when he's visiting his grandma because she lives in the country that he has a love for hunting. Oh, So he will hunt 
kill skin rabbits because he loved their fur. That was like his trophy. He didn't even want to eat the meat. Like he You're supposed to eat a rabbit? Yeah, a rabbit is supposed to be good lean meat. Like my brother in law, he literally Oh no. His whole life sits on the front porch Eats during rabbits. the winter months, shoots, gets his pellet gun, shoots a rabbit, then he'll take it in the kitchen, gut it, skin it, and then cook it and eat it. Oh, uh, I feel like <laughs> is he gonna be a some, serial killer? I think he might be some kind of killer. I don't know if that's I really think it's normal. just like country life. I mean it's it's hillbilly. <laughs> Ma- but why do he might as well get a squirrel? No, well, I mean he'll. They look like the same things. But who's going to eat a squirrel? Whoever's going to eat a rabbit. <laughs> True, <laughs> I wouldn't eat it either. So maybe it's a little sus. I don't know. Y'all tell us if y'all eat rabbits, and if you do, do you skin them and I mean, clean I get, them in like your a kitchen? Rabbit's foot, like a lucky rabbit's foot. Yeah. Like, okay, go ahead. Carl. Well, he likes the fur. Carl. What's his name? Carl. Carl. His name is Carl. Eugene Watts. I'm getting Carl and Dean Coral. I know. Ma- I'll do too. We okay. Will. I didn't know. It'll if happen. That was, okay. It'll happen. They're actually probably friends. So, um, you know, he started loving hunting, but still everything was kind of normal. He would hang out with his cousins and they were maybe real hillbilly because they extended his name to Coral. What? Coral what? Why? Eugene Watts. I don't know. So this name stuck with him for forever. So That's he will I'm now confused. be called Coral Eugene Watts. Like even the police call him that later on. So it's like a C-A-R-O-L? nickname that just sticks R O L C O R A L. Yeah. Let's learn spelling. <laughs> <laughs> so um Coral wasn't very smart in school. Like he had, there was reports that said he had a 75 IQ. So if average is 85, he was 75. So it was very below. Um, or if normal's 85, he was 75. And he just couldn't do normal assignments. Like it took, a, he needed a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And he'd get frustrated, but he would never give up, right? Oh, yeah. So, and then he got a little bit more behind because in third grade, he developed meningitis. We have a shot for that now. Maybe he was anti-vaxxer. He was an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> and that meningitis turned into polio. We got a <gasps> shot for that too, right? Yes. Remember I talked about polio in one of the episodes and how the lady always used to take her son to the to the hospital <laughs> oh, yeah. to look at all the polio people. Oh, so, yeah. So he would, it was, it had to do with, uh, it was the eyeball killer. Yeah. Anyway, she was I just, scared that he was gonna get polio. Yeah, and and he would like he was he was killing animals and mounting them and putting marbles for their eyeballs uh-huh. and all that stuff. But uh-huh. so maybe man, all hunt, kids that hunt will be will serial probably get polio. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll get polio. Oh shit! So it, it okay. So it progressed, and so he had to spend a year of his life in the hospital getting poked getting prodded, getting spinal taps. He didn't go to school. He was like in pain. And so this was traumatic for him. Oh, like, can you imagine terrible. Yeah. as a third grader, like no. being in pain? No. So this is where he spent a year of his life, but yeah. he got better. Okay. So then I was like, maybe this kind of trauma could have caused what you're about to hear to happen. It's going to happen. I don't know. That's the only traumatic thing that's happened in his life so his I childhood mean, is pretty I boring like that's an excuse for him and then we go into the stereotype because he starts sports and guess what he is amazing at every sports <sighs> he was amazing at football basketball baseball and track he could run so even though he was shitty in the grades he made it work so that he could play sports and he Listen, excelled we gotta have something going for us if yeah. you're not a smart person at least yes. you're athletic. Well, he was very athletic. And even after school, he would pick up boxing. And so he would box and, and win, like, the Golden Gloves title. Like, he was just all-around athlete. Um, Come on now. Okay. Mama. Excuse me. Mama found a new boyfriend because, remember, Daddy left a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, he left. He's just gone. She's dating a mechanic. And she must have been real thirsty because this mechanic has six kids. Oh, no. He, <laughs> so she's got two. He must two. be good with his hands. <laughs> you know. She's got two. He's got six. And then they get married and they have two more oh, together. why would you? No. Okay. Well, so there's good. ten kids living All in right, this house. So you got a daycare. 
basically. <laughs> they're basically running a daycare. She's, they probably need to get a license. I, know, I think so. <laughs> I think I just figured out why Coral became a serial yeah, killer. He's like, there's it's too many children in, here. in the house. There's probably some like hidden in the back wall and everything. Yeah, yes. yeah that's probably where he was. Yeah. Oh no. So, but but Cor because Cor was so quiet, like he kind of faded into the background. Like so, they didn't mess with him. He didn't mess with them. He was the oldest. He did his own thing. Okay. Well, he's the oldest. I mean, I would like go in my. I would like trap myself in a closet to not deal with all those kids. So, <sighs> so still nothing like bad. Well, he picks up a paper route because, you know, he's boxing and he's playing all the sports, but then he wants to make some money too. He wants to be busy. So he picks up a paper route. And one day he just knocks on the door of this lady's house. She answers it and he whoops her ass like, <laughs> like he's in a boxing match. Right hook, left hook, uppercut, jab, 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 like he everything. Just starts beating her up. Just start beating her up. Gets on top of her. She's screaming, and so the scream gets so loud. He gets startled, and he like gets he leaves. But instead of like running and hiding or going home and panicking, he just goes finishing throws the rest of his papers, and he's just hitting front doors with the papers that he's throwing. What? Then he goes home. And he has his normal evening routine. He, like, eats, he takes his bath, he goes to bed, he does whatever. Four days later, the police come because she's now kind of better and healed. She doesn't yeah. die. And she tells them who it is. She knows them. And so they come and they knock on the door and they pick him up. And he just, like, uh. calmly is like, yeah, I did it. Uh. And so they're like, well, why? And he was just like, I just felt like beating somebody up. He had stopped boxing a couple weeks before because he got hit and he didn't like being on the other end. So he like basically quit mid fight. He must have like a women hate like he hates women. I know, but I just haven't felt felt. I don't know why yet. Well, I guess because his mom had to go marry that guy with 18 <laughs> kids. <laughs> He's like, get any attention. He's pissed. He's pissed. He's pissed. <laughs> Maybe that's it. You might have just diagnosed it because I was like, why? I feel like I'm, I might be some kind of psychologist now yeah. at this point. Let's just go ahead and get you. Okay. Well, I have license. my notebook out and everything, so I really <laughs> kind of look like a psychologist. A <laughs> She's real official. I'm official. So instead of going to juvenile, they took him to a Detroit mental clinic, which may be good because they're like, why did he just want to randomly beat up somebody? And he was how old? He was uh, 15. Ish. Okay. Yeah, 15 years old. And so when he was there, like, he was open up and telling all the things. And so he was like, I lost my virginity at 14, but I didn't like it. I felt numb. It didn't feel good. And the doctors were like, okay. And he was like, I also have these dreams where I'm killing and beating women. <sighs> like, dreams. He didn't say nightmares. Note that. It's a dream. And so the doctors are like, well, how do you feel afterwards? And he goes, oh, I wake up feeling better and refreshed. Oh, <laughs> so same. the doctors are like, okay, we'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're fine. Yeah. So he ends up being at this mental clinic for maybe six weeks. Oh. And after multiple sessions, they couldn't get him to understand that what he did was wrong. He didn't feel any remorse. And he couldn't even say, I'm sorry. Oh, that's so, not very nice. Of course they let Coral, him out. Coral, Coral, Carl. Of course they let him out back into the world. Yeah. And, you know, Coach is like, all right, come on, because we've been losing these games. Yeah. Since you've been in here. <laughs> Go ahead and get back on this basketball team. Yep, we need it's you. It's probably football season because it was like September to, it was like October, November. So yeah. they're like, we've been losing. Get back on this football team. So he's back in the normal world, 16, living his life. He found some drugs, but he's not like he doesn't have many friends, and I—that's always especially sketchy to if me. you're like an athlete, you're on teams. You should people like him, but he doesn't. It's not relationships like don't appeal to him, and friendships don't appeal to him. So he might like have conversations and stuff, but he doesn't like go out of it's his like way a, like, to go kind hang of out. Asperger, like a like no, a he just don't give a shit about people. people. No, he just don't. I just don't think he can make asexual? those relationships. He didn't like <laughs> sex, so he could have been asexual. I do know somebody who's asexual. Well, I how many? So like he's not interested. I know I could come up with all of this. I'm <laughs> diagnosing him with 18 things right okay. now. Okay, 
He's Asperger's and asexual so far. Yep. Great job, psychologist. You're welcome. So, um, I'll write that down. He gets a scholarship to go play college football. Wow. Yeah, he's that good. He's playing, he gets a scholarship to Lane College and it's in Jackson, Tennessee. They're in Detroit. So that's kind of far away. Um, and he's a running back. And so he's actually excited about this. And so is his mom and his grandma. And they're like, okay, new new chapter like this can be great for him well he does good for about three months and he has an injury and it's a career ending injury so he'll never be able to play again so he's like there's no point of being here anymore let me go back to Detroit and he works with his stepdad in the mechanic shop and he enrolls in community college there so at least he wants to go to college um so He'll check in with his psychiatric doctors like he's supposed to. And now he tells them, I'm still having those great dreams. So those aren't going away. But now I'm getting urges to do them like in real life. And I'm not sure if I like girls or boys. Uh Okay. Because he's had more sexual experiences. And I guess it's just not fun for him. Gender fluid. I, I don't know. It's just so weird. Okay. So here's October. He had done come come home after senior year, right? After senior year, went to college. He's home by October. Okay. He knocks on the door of a young woman named Lenora. She wa- It was 11 in the morning. She answered the door, and she says, this is her, go- her quote, there was a good-looking, well-groomed, very in shape, trim black man at my door. Hey. She would probably like, hey. how you do? <laughs> that would be Caroline. Come on in. He said, is Charles home? Oh, he's like, I don't want to see you. Yeah, not you. <laughs> Where Charles at? And so Lenore was like, no, nope, no, sorry, no Charles here. So he just turned around and she shut the door. Well, 10 minutes later, she comes back. So she's like, this is a little sketch. She puts that little chain oh, yeah. lock that used to be yeah. on the door and she answers it. Oh, and he, he asks for again. Charles again. 10 minutes later. 10 after minutes the same- later. Okay. So she's too nice. Oh, no. Lenora. She's oh, like, no. well, there's no Charles here, but do you want to write him a letter? I'll what? go get some paper. <laughs> I will get some paper and a pen. Why would you want to write? A- and in case he comes, I'll give him this letter. And Wait, did could, she even know who Charles no, was? No, Charles don't ex- uh, Charles is she, little brother. So that's probably she's trying to like get in, come in, so she brothers. can like. Y- no, she's like keeps. She shuts the door. When she shuts it, that chain falls off, and he busts in when she's getting the paper and the pencil. So he busts in and he starts to cho- attack her and choke her. Oh hell! And she screams and screams, and he gets off. Gets off, and he starts running. Right. <sighs> Like he does good. You'll figure out he runs real good. Well, because he's an athlete, so he's, he's so an fast. Athlete. He's, he's doing agility drills, running down the street, yes. all these things. Yeah, I can see it now. And so she called the police. She reported it, and the police like have no leads. They're like, "Well, what does he look like?" She was like, "Well, good looking, trim, black man." And so they're asking other people, and they're just like, "There's some random black guy knocking on doors asking for Charles." <laughs> He's going off the door. That's his him. Or he's just randomly asking. Mm, so, so if somebody comes to my door asking for Charles, don't I don't need to let. I him mean, in. Char- don't be friends with any Charles. I kind of want to let him in, but I won't. <laughs> no, <laughs> not if they ask for Charles. Let them. They can ask for Cletus. Or okay, something. Cletus, Cletus. Cletus. <laughs> so five days later, like he's just kind of progressing a little bit. There's a 19 year old young mom named Gloria that was found dead in an apartment. She was stabbed 33 times in her chest. Her windpipe was crushed. And the thing that he stabbed her with was like this wooden, like wooden, like stabbing device, shank type thing. Oh, was my. like embedded deep in her spine. <gasps> so he was stabbing her so hard in her chest. Oh. It was like embedded in her spine. Oh, why was he so mad? He why does he have so much anger? I don't know. The mom. only lead that they had was there's a black man going around at the apartment complex, asking knocking on Charles. doors, asking for Charles. Oh, my god! So the police write it down, but they don't do anything with it. They don't, like, send memos or, like, go to the news and say, beware of a black man asking for Charles. Are we back in Cleveland? We. <laughs> <laughs> no, where was that? What happened in Cleveland? The Cleveland with the Castro. Oh, Yeah. 
Yeah. The Toro police. <laughs> they might have went to the same training. <laughs> so, because there was a Cleveland black serial killer too, so I got a little scared. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. Oh. The police were. I mean, the they were like. People were like, did you dust for fingerprints? No, they didn't go to the crime scene. Then police said, well, you know, the family cleaned it up, so there was no need of cleaning it. And so the family was like, no, we didn't clean it up. So there was just no, they didn't, they didn't work the crime scene, basically. So there was still nothing. So one month later, there's a lady named Diane Williams. She was attacked. She's the apartment manager. So she is at work and she's looking out the window and she's like, there's a weird sh- black guy like lurking around. And so she asked a couple of the residents and they were like, yeah, that's the guy that keeps knocking on the door, asking for Charles right there. Had the police went to the news, done a conference or said, beware, let us know, call us. If you somebody's knocking on your door, if you see a strange black guy asking for Charles, Well, Diane was like, okay, whatever. She got off. She went home, and then there was a knock at her door, and it was Carl Watts, and he asked for Charles, and then he just shoved his way inside of her home and wrapped his hands around her throat. She tries to scream but can't because she's being choked, and then her phone starts ringing. That's old days when it's like a phone and a receiver. So she tries to get to the phone and knocks it off the hook. So at least somebody's listening. So she's screaming and she's telling them what's going on. And he gets up and he he's a runner. He's a track star. Yeah, he, he, track star. he takes off. And he she's smart because she looks. She doesn't follow him. But she's like, let me see where he's going. And she sees the type of car that he gets into. She calls the police and she tells them what type of car it is. And they link it to Coral. Oh. Right? Yeah. And they put them in a lineup with eight other trim black men. Probably really <laughs> easy to find. Let's just go outside. <laughs> it's Detroit. You know, there's a lot of black people there. So the black men and they, Lenora and Diane, are like, yep, this is him. So they got him, right? Oh, no. But. And oh. then he admits to it. He's like, yeah, I tapped them and 15 other women. Oh, shit. <laughs> like he. What's not up with it? I know. Yeah. And they were like, well, what about Gloria? Oh. What about Gloria? Because she's the mama that was stabbed 33 times. And he was like, no, I was in that apartment complex, but it, I didn't kill her. Which is sketchy because all these other women are white. Gloria's <gasps> the only black one. <gasps> so he's killing all. White women, he doesn't care what they look like. No, you, he's killing the black one. He's kill. he, I mean, he's attacking white women. Yeah. The black woman is the one that was killed. Oh. And so they can't tie him. There's no evidence because they didn't brush the crime scene. Ew. And, um, and he's not admitting to that one. He's and just he's a- not admitting to th- admitting to that. So they really only have him like for assault. But you can't even keep him in jail for assault right now because I guess it's got to go to trial or something. I don't know. Yeah. But when they did catch him, he was stealing lumber for some reason. Maybe he was building a basement. Like, well, if that's what he, Joseph Fritzl. If that's what he's stabbing people with, he's still in the. Oh, piece he's of making wood. the. He's okay, I didn't even think about that. I don't. Well, know. he was still in lumber, and so they're like, we can get him for theft. So we can at least keep him for 45 days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he yeah, serves yeah, yeah, 45 yeah. days in the same mental clinic that he went to before. So doctors are like, come on in, girl. <laughs> and they determine that he is very dangerous. Okay. And that he will offend again. And they let him go. And they call, say he has antisocial personality disorder. Oh, that sounds yes. familiar. Then he finally stands trial for the assault and he gets one year. But I never found if that's really in jail or like back in the mental facility. I don't know. But he's out within a year and he's good looking. So he gets a girlfriend real quick. Mm -hmm. He's dating a girl named Dolores. They have a daughter named Nakisha. And then he leaves the next day, basically. He's like his daddy. He's like, I can't Uh -uh. be having all these kids. (gasps) My mama shouldn't have had all these kids in the house. have one kid. (laughs) <laughs> no, he didn't want any. <laughs> He's stupid. Look, his daddy got pissed when they had two. He was He's okay. Like, Where's Charles? Where's Charles? <laughs> <laughs> so he left. Dolores was pissed. 
Come to find out, he had a side piece named Valeria. Oh, is that sounds like some kind of disease. STD. You got a STD, Valeria. Valeria. I don't know about that. I, I don't know, know either. Mm-mm. But he ends up marrying Valeria. And Valeria's like, I'm, you know, I got the man of my dreams. He's good looking. He's a mechanic. <laughs> he could go with his hands. <laughs> he he can makes run all fast. these things out of wood. He, he can run fast. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> He's very devoted to this Charles guy. <laughs> so he's, she's, she's in, at first like pretty in love. And then he starts like transforming. She's like oh, no. seeing him in these dreams that are really night terrors. Oh, so he no. gets up and he's swinging in the middle of the night. <gasps> she gets like hits. What? He is like actively fighting people in these dreams. Oh my gosh. She does it and she stops trying to wake him up. She just like gets up and goes in the other room. Then he starts getting obsessive with her. Like, she's not allowed to wear makeup. He throws it away. He flushes her wigs down the toilet. She's not allowed to dress up. Like First he of just all, how did wh- they even get flushed down? <laughs> I, I would be like, just that's tried. just going to clog real yeah, fast. I, I think he just tried, but she wasn't allowed to do any of that. He, she just had to look like shit all the time. Oh, no. And he would become real angry. Well, mm. she also said they would have sex. And he would flip her over and do it from behind. No, oh. he would just get up and then leave what? and be gone in the middle of the night for hours. So she would wake up at three was in the I morning. Married? Was this somebody who was Were married, married to? to Coral? <laughs> she would wake up at three in the morning and he would be gone and he would come back and he wouldn't say a word. But sometimes his t- clothes would be torn. <laughs> come t- and she's just like, oh, OK, you can wash. You can. He go, mow the lawn. Do you need me to sew your clothes? You need me to sew your holes up? <laughs> hey, boo, you need to uh, get a needle and thread. So, you know, I, I guess in hindsight, she was like saying, oh, yeah, I guess it all. Mm, well, what she didn't weird. know is that, like, there's about to be a series of attacks that her husband's responsible for. So he always starts this shit in October. It's in a whole new October the next year. He has some th- Halloween, th- or is he a, what's his sign? I don't, I don't know. He was. I don't know anything about signs. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say maybe Scorpio. Like, I don't know what the fuck. Scorpio? Sure. Night, there was, is October. Peggy, 22 years old, worked for the airport. Peggy. She was found dead in the front yard of her boyfriend's she, house. Was she white or black? She was white. Oh, she wasn't so robbed. She wasn't raped. She was simply just strangled and left there, like displayed. That's a he just to be found. strangles everybody. You think? <gasps> oh, no. no clues, no leads, no nothing. A couple of weeks later, it's Halloween, and now there's a 40 year old. So it's a 22 year old, now 40 year old lady named Jean Klein. She too is white. She was found dead in her yard. She was stabbed 13 times and left for dead. This happened at 6.45 in the evening on Halloween. What are people doing? Trick-or-treating. Yes. People were trick-or-treating all around. They thought her. she was a cop. They thought she was a prop. A prop. They thought she was So they were just like, decoration. oh, look at that. And, and that's oh, happened that before. So real. Yes. Oh. Isn't that crazy? <gasps> Isn't that oh crazy? Gosh. They oh thought it was a gosh. Halloween decoration. Nobody called the police the next morning. Somebody found her. And they found like, can you clean up your decorations? <laughs> <laughs> like, so bitch, is she, she dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, no rape, no robbery, like, um, nothing. So yeah. the police are like, he's just killing to kill. Whoever this is, is killing to kill. Like, there's no, like, motive behind it. Okay, so... All they know, now they're interviewing people Mm because here's these two bodies and they're two different neighborhoods and they're like, have you seen anything suspicious? (laughs) People, (laughs) this kills me. (laughs) People are like, there's this good looking, (laughs) well-built black man (laughs) in the area at the the time. And so the police were like, well, great. It's fucking Detroit. (laughs) There's black people everywhere. What am I going to do? I hope everybody listening knows I'm black. (laughs) Hello, hello, ghouls, ghosts, goblins, and everything in between. Welcome to Across the Veil with host Emma and Zelda. We're two amateur cryptozoologists on a mission to explore the things that lie 
Beyond. Beyond what? I, I, I don't know, the, the veil? It, it just sounds poetic and mysterious. Oh, true. <laughs> Learn about cryptids, folklore, monsters, and things that are just kind of haunted. Anything that seems a little otherworldly and strange. Just like us. <laughs> <laughs> New episodes out every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at across.the.veil and Twitter at across the veil one We hope you join us next time. Across the Veil. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so <laughs> then a month later, I guess he takes off for Thanksgiving because... He didn't do anything November, but in December. Oh, he takes off for murdering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's another woman found dead outside the cleaner. She was stabbed 12 times. Okay. No robbery. No wa- rape. Her name is Helen May Dutcher. She's going to come back later. You can write oh, her down. Let me write her down. Helen May Dutcher, H&M Cleaners. Okay. Okay. Um. So the police are like, none of these women are linked up. Like, there's no common factor with them. Yeah. Um, are they random? Are they related? Are they unrelated? Or were they even committed by the same person? Like, they just know that they have these random white women just being killed. Yeah. So two more bodies come up that month. Don and Malik. Don was asphyxiated. Malik's head was removed from her body decapitated decapitated her body was found but her head still has not <gasps> been did he eat it where's the head i, I wish no because it's not that interesting well i don't know maybe charlie brant took it maybe charlie brant maybe charlie brant to the head. charlie brant go to detroit at all y- listen i, I mean, don't even know yeah i would okay i would stop and call the police and pretend like I'm damn near FBI. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next month, here's Shirley. Shirley's 17 years old, and this one's sad. I mean, they're all sad. This one's sad. She's 17 years old. She's getting off work, walking home because her and her boyfriend had got to a fight, and she's like, I don't want him to come pick me up. I only live four miles down the road. So she's walking, four-mile walk, well, boyfriend feels guilty, so he comes and he tries to come and pick her up, uh-huh. but she's pissed and she doesn't get in the car and he begs her and she doesn't do it, doesn't do it. So he's like, I'll just go meet her at her house. She's close. Mm-hmm. Well, she never shows up. <gasps> when she's found, she's about 100 yards from her front door and she was stabbed to death. The first stab wound killed her, went, uh, went through like her rib cage and punctured her heart. And he mutilated her face. Wow. So when she was found, her face looked like a maze of like opened like wounds. Oh. So my. why is, it's like he's progressing each time. And why the mutilation? Does he not like their beauty? Does he not like that he don't like their beauty? It's just weird. Okay. So police are like, is this the same person? They're still like questioning. They have no idea. What, yeah. There's nothing in common. Yes, because what we know about serial killers, at least to this point, is like there's a like, pattern. This is why we don't do black serial killers because it's real confusing. They're breaking all they the rules. They're breaking all the rules. Breaking all the rules. <laughs> so the style of the murder is different. He's strangling them. He's stabbing them. He's decapitating them. Um, he's like just all over the place. He's suffocating them. There's no mo no, at all. No. Um, and he, they do know that he's training, he's killing just to kill. Yeah. Um, and then by July, here's Glenda and she oh was stabbed gosh. 28 times. Okay. So then he's like, let me try to do two in one night. Oh, so he well. kidnaps and abducts a girl named Lily Dunn. Witnesses literally see her kicking and screaming and getting inside of a car, being drugged inside of a car. She was never seen. And then 45 minutes later, Irene, 
was partying all night with her friends, walking home. He came behind her and sliced her throat, but she lived. What? Yeah. But where she was killed, there was a surveillance video. So the police are like, let's pull this footage. Or she was attacked? Yeah. She was like, there was, because she was leaving like downtown bars and stuff. So there was companies that had video. And so they found this car and it was a brown Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And they were like 1978 Pontiac Brown Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And that's what Cora Watts drives. But they don't know this by now. Oh, my gosh. You know, they're just like, okay, at least we have a car. So that wasn't linked to Cora Watts, and it kind of falls by the wayside. But now they got a, now they're like, we found a pattern. We found a pattern. Oh, what's the pattern? The pattern is all these women are being abducted in between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Oh. Sunday morning. What? So they coined him the Sunday morning oh, slasher. Oh, no, they did not. <laughs> they did. And if you Google Coral Eugene Watts, he's called the Sunday morning slasher. Okay, I'm going to Google So it. now they're saying, okay, we do have a serial killer. How did they figure that out? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I this I think is scary is like, how you going to kill on the Sabbath? Like, Kill, how you gonna kill anyways, but don't be killing on Jesus' day. Probably that's when people like have their guard, well. Guard down, because it's Saturday night, they're getting off work, they're tired, or they're coming home from partying, they're not paying attention. Like, it's just vulnerable, and maybe, I don't, that's just when he hunts, or does he hunt. So this is what, you know, we have two types of serial killers. We have organized and unorganized. Okay. He is definitely unorganized Absolute, right yeah he don't have a plan or no. does it seem like he's has a plan like he's not hunting them like he's not like he's an opportunist because some of them are like they will for weeks if not mm-hmm. months track and they'll follow the person and they'll figure out like what they do what's their schedule yes. so then they can that's why he exactly. would be called an opportunist because he just sees an opportunity and yeah. he like seizes it and takes it. And then he don't even have a plan on how he's going to kill him. It's just like whatever he feels like doing in the yeah. time. Yeah. Very impulsive. And this is why like he would be a B team serial killer, I think, because it's un- un- uninteresting. Yeah. Like it's, it's, he's got a lot of numbers. We'll see. But like we like the people who like they have a plan, they have a pattern. They like they eat like them. a They're secret live. Crazy. Yeah. Like, Oh. Anyways, okay, so they're like Sunday Slasher, and yeah, this is Sunday now slasher. on the news and in the newspaper. So Detroit's going crazy. They're like, we got a serial killer. It's okay if it was just like random women being dead, right? Yeah. But now it's one person doing it and targeting these women. So they establish a Sunday Slasher task force. Oh. At the Detroit police. Yes, they do. So now they're like, okay, we got on, we got to really be paying attention. Uh-huh. Well, this one guy, his name is James Authors. He's a police sergeant. And okay. he's like, you know what? This is a little familiar. And he's like, I remember a couple years ago, I arrested a newspaper boy for randomly <gasps> beating, knocking on the door of a woman and beating a woman for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. So he called up his friends. He's like, Carl, Coral, Eugene, Watts. Look him up. He fits the profile, which there's not really a profile, but he did something similar. Look him up. So the police task force is like, okay, we'll add him to the list. It's a long list. It's a long it's list. It's a long list of well trimmed, good looking black men <laughs> in Detroit, Michigan. Well trimmed, <laughs> well trimmed, well built, athletic, but I mean, asking for Charles. <laughs> he doesn't he don't even need charles no more No, he doesn't even need Charles. he though. don't need charles Mm-mm. so you know he they add him to the list but the list is so long there's so much crime he spreads so thin that um they just can't they don't get to him yet and so uh, it's october again and so here's oh some attacks happening so this is sandra sandra's coming home from night school she gets attacked but she doesn't die. She gets stabbed repeatedly. She ends up pretty paralyzed. But when she wakes up, she's able to tell the cops that where she was and that she had saw Coral three times that day. She thinks she saw Coral three times oh. that day. She thinks she saw Coral at the bus stop. 
and then at lunchtime outside of her school, and then that night when she got off the bus in the bushes. Oh. In the bushes. I mean. <laughs> and so the police were like, okay, okay. And so they looked at the footage in that area, the video surveillance footage. They see another ground brand, brown Grand Prix. Uh-huh. And they're like, that's the same car. We've seen that car before. Um, and so now I'm like, does he hunt? Is he a hunter? Or was she mistaken? Like, we don't know because we haven't really, nobody else has really said, survivors yeah. have really said that. We don't have any indication that he was a hunter. I still think he's an opportunist. Opportunist. So here's a Mary. You know, we can't have a story without a Mary, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's yep, yep. Mary Angus. Okay. She was leaving a Halloween party. She was driving home. She got out of her car and... And she looked across the way and she noticed a well-trimmed black man in a hoodie. <laughs> I can't. I know. Every single one. Well-trimmed and shape athletic. Okay. Okay. Here's where. So she, he's wearing a hoodie. And she's like, oh, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me get to my front door. She's by herself. He bent down and she's looking like he's tying a shoe. Mm-mm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's in his track. You know, you get <gasps> down in your in oh, the blocks. He's in the blocks. He's in the blocks. And oh, he no. gets up and he takes <gasps> off in a full sprint towards her. And she, she said, she, I found this scream from like the bottom of my gut. And it was so loud. And he took a hard right <laughs> when he heard that scream. <laughs> I guess it scared him too. So she, her life was spared. And she was able to call the police because he got scared. <laughs> but can you imagine, like, he... <laughs> Runs like use his track skills. He's like, are you saying who's in both over here? Or yeah, like, it was you saying he's a runner. He's a track star. Okay. I love that. She screamed so loud. Yes. <laughs> and he's him. just like, took a hard right. <laughs> he's like, Oh, f- <laughs> if this be, I'm not dealing with this. Nah, loud nah, nonsense. Nah, nah, nah. It's uh. too much work. So, um, so he's not a hunt. That's weird. No, I mean, you don't, he's confused. He's very, he's very confused. confused. He's like got 14 personalities. I think I don't, I don't know. Whatever has happened to his wife at this point. She's just at home, you know, sewing <laughs> his clothes when he comes, when he brings <laughs> when him he, back <laughs> torn. He just, she's just sewing him up. She's sewing him up. His stepbrothers and sisters, he's like 18 of them. Who knows what they're doing? His, she probably babysitting. <laughs> so, um, she calls the police. Yeah. And task force is like, this sounds like coral. Let's bring her in. And they put a lineup of pictures and she picks coral out of all of them. Right. And so they're like, it's coral. It's coral. Let's go yeah. get him. But not really because it's dark. She says he's dark. He's black and he has on a hoodie. That could be anybody. <laughs> You know, that yeah. could be any mud body. So I guess they're thinking it's not going to hold up. So oh why even drag him in here? And they don't. They don't even bring him in. Well, and five try. days later, he kills a 63-year-old. Like, look at these ages. 22, 40, 60. What? 17. What? Now it's a 63. Her name's Lena, and she's found hanging hmm. naked hmm. from a tree in her own front yard. And she's hung by her own black belt from her trench coat what she's naked this will be the only time he sexually assaults somebody wow he channel channels his inner kenneth mcduff and shoves a broomstick up <gasps> her, and that's how she's found hanging <gasps> with a broomstick horrible with a broomstick. with the broomstick yes Oh, my. So two of the detectives on the task force, there's Heath and Bunton are their last names. They're like, screw the rest of this list. We know who this is. His name's come up 40, came up 45 times. Yeah. Coral Watts, Coral Watts. We just need to tie him to all these murders. So they're like, let's at least put a tell on him. So they do. And they see him in action following a lady that's walking home from work. He's following her in her in his brown Grand Prix. Like nine blocks he goes. She turns, he turns. She goes and she notices him. He hides, she hides, and then he waits for her to come out and finds her. But so, anyways, but he doesn't touch her. She gets away. And when he's looking for her, he gets out of his car and he's looking in alleys and behind dumpsters and he's like, Where does she go? He's pissed. <laughs> when he turns around, the cops are there. What does he do? Uh, he's a runner. He starts sprinting. 
<laughs> and so these cops were like, oh, no, we can't catch uh-uh. him. No. Let's get in the car. <laughs> so they pursue the chase in like, the car. He's on foot, and they do find him. And only because his license and his registration and tags are out can they take him in. Oh, because he just still yeah, didn't commit a yeah, crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Still didn't commit a crime. So they take him in and they're like, we know who you are. We know what you've been doing. You've been killing all these women. And he's like, cool as a cucumber. Yeah. I need my phone call. And that's it. Like they have no reason to hold him. But they do search his car and they find a dictionary. And the dictionary, one of the students he killed's name was Rebecca. And it had Rebecca on there. Then they find some wooden carved like shaved knife things. Oh. And they found traces of blood. So they're like, let's run this blood. But that takes forever. They can't keep them. They have no reason to keep them there until the blood comes back. I don't understand our system. (laughs) This is crazy. (laughs) So he gets to go. He's the luckiest black man in the whole world. No other black man has ever left jail for if they even think that he's killed a white girl. Uh-uh. Or assaulted a white no. girl. Him and OJ, the two luckiest. Oh my God. If the girl Him and OJ fit, must have quit. Must have quit. <laughs> so he's cool as a cucumber. He's not even nervous. He gets to get out and he's free. He is a, so, he, cause he, yeah, sociopath. Like he has no, it, like, like no empathy, feelings, nothing, no more. Nothing, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing. Nothing. He does not have anything. He doesn't care what he does at nope. all. So now he knows how it is to be hunted because they're telling him tailing him and they're coordinating with all the like surrounding police departments so it's not just detroit it's ann arbor because some of these have happened in ann arbor or ann arbor shit i can't talk (laughs) and all these places around there so when he like travels to like from waco to bell mead oh bell mead cops are on him yeah from bell mead to hewitt Hewitt. oh hewitt Hewitt cops are on him so they're like that in all the different towns and they are working together to try to catch him doing something and they just don't (gasps) they don't Don't. they don't but they're also um like he's playing real normal he got a new girlfriend by this time and he's like going out to eat with his girlfriend um, and they pull his record and they realize that he was the number one suspect on the Gloria case. The very first mama that was stabbed 33 times, the only black woman. Uh-huh. And then they found out he spent time in a mental facility. So they're like, oh, it's like, it's him. Yeah. We just need proof. This is like validating that they know that it's him. And um, then they're talking to Canadian police and Murders are happening in Canada. Well, they got to tell on him because it's right there, like next door to Michigan. Oh, so they got to tell on him. But the tail can only follow him in the States. When he crosses that Canadian border, nobody's watching him. So he found way to a way to kill, even with I I know she's looking at a map. Yeah. She had no idea Canada was right above. You know, it because of what I do and I look at maps with my work, <laughs> I was like You mean when you sub the geography classes? No. No, I look at the territory <laughs> checks. Girl, I've been doing territory <laughs> checks. No, but like I was like, is Canada's right there? But I, you know, these states up yes. in the north are just so tiny and I need this I need I'm used to It all is right there. And then when we hear border we think Mexico. Like, yes. you go across the border, it's Mexico, but you, can't no, just, you can just Canada. drive up over Stri- it? Yeah. Like a, it's I'm just sure like, you cross a bridge and you have to, like, do something. I don't know if you need a passport. I don't know. I've never been. What do you need to do? I don't know. We need to get a geographyist in here. <laughs> a geographist. Is that what it's called? I, I think so. <laughs> okay. So, women are being killed in Canada, but they can't really do anything about that. Okay. And what's crazy is there hasn't been any local Sunday slasher attacks since they've been telling him right there in Michigan uh-huh. area. So then they put a tracker on his car, but this tracker had a date on it. And so they're like, we have until January something. And if we can't catch him doing anything, like then this is our time is up. Well, they call him in and they're like, we're just going to put the heat on him. And we're going to present the evidence and we're going to get them to confess. That's their, like, their, yeah, their plan. Yeah. yeah. So they brought him in and he was a robot. 
Like he no emotion, no confession, like straight denial, straight denial, straight denial for hours. Because they got the blood, those that blood, yeah. they got that back and you couldn't trace it. Like it didn't have, they couldn't link it to anything. So that blood wasn't even oh going to help gosh. them. They were counting on that blood. So now they're like, we need a confession. Well, Detective Bunton says, you know what? Let me try this. So he goes in there and um, he demos, he says, I know what you're doing. We know exactly what you're doing. I even know how you're doing it. So he grabs Coral and he demonstrates how Coral is sneaking up behind these women, putting them in a headlock and stabbing them yeah. and choking them while he's doing it. And for some reason that made him bust out in tears. What? Like a first grader. <gasps> and he even asked for his mommy. Oh. <laughs> okay, whippy voice killer. Come on now. So... They call his mom up there, but you know, they're like, oh, let's get mom up here. Cause sometimes they'll confess, like Chris Watts confessed when his daddy came up there. Uh -huh. So maybe they're like, let's get mom up here. She may, he may soften up, soften up and he may talk. Well, he got smart real quick. He dried up those tears real quick. He still didn't talk. Alligator Mama tears. took too long. And guess what? What? He killed the police officer. He walked right out of oh, Detroit PD no. one more time. And they were pissed. He was like, you know what? I Let me just go. I got to go. So he left town and guess where he went? Canada. Texas. Oh, hell. H-Town, baby. Oh. He was like, let me go to H-Town. Dean Coral's been getting away with killing all these little <laughs> boys. I'm probably safe with killing. And sure enough, H-Town was, like, a great place for a serial killer because they had, like, 688 deaths that year, 710 deaths, like, in 1981. So he's like, I'm pretty sure oh, yeah, I can I'm get safe. some cover my ground. So he gets a job. He stays with some friends. And now he's in Houston. And Bunton is, like, pissed. Detective Bunton, because he's like, man, he's gone. We'll never get him. We'll never get him. He's going to kill again. So he gets an envelope. And some stamps. And, and some labels. <laughs> and some labels. And he mails all, like, the whole file. Did and they know how that, that, they, that he PD. went to Houston? He found out because he saw where his job, his last check was forwarded <gasps> to his new address. And it was in Houston. Oh. So he called up the Houston PD and he was like, you got a killer coming. I'm going to send you some stuff in the mail. <laughs> so three weeks later, they got this big packet. No. <laughs> so send them some stuff. And Detective Bostic received it. And so Bostic is like, okay, let me let me look this guy up. He had just got a job at a mechanic shop. So he went to the job and he told the boss, and the boss fired him. Well, oh, hell. Coral smart, right? Coral, like, tells everybody around. He's like, well, I'm just going to go to Dallas. Screw Houston. Oh. And he tells people around there. So now the word is he's going to Dallas. So this detective... Calls up Dallas PD, sends the paperwork, and Houston is big. He just moves to another part of Houston. Like, mm -hmm. he stays. So they think he's gone, but he stays. Gets a new job, and he starts... Um, I guess they don't check, like, your any, if you're a mechanic. I mean... I, I don't know. I don't know. You know I mean, what are they going to check? He ain't got in trouble for anything, except for his the newspaper I don't stuff. I understand how they can't get, how he can't get in <laughs> trouble for anything. I don't understand this world. He's had like assault, and that's not even that's like a little a misdemeanor. It's like get it just because they don't have like what they don't have anything, any anything. No, or he'd be arrested and in jail. They don't have any reason to hold him and keep him in jail. All they have is like all these people who identified him. But what evidence is there? Like one lady was like, and, and it's always dark. So the lady in the hoodie, she was like, yeah, it's pitch dark. And he's a black guy in the hoodie. Well, is that any lawyer could tear that up on the stand? Uh. The two ladies, they did get him for assault, but then that's really it. Uh, I'm so <laughs> I know mad about it. I know that's why okay. he's not in jail. And that's why all these other people like are going to go killing. So, now he's in Houston, and he's at a bar. This is September 5th, 1981. He's drinking, and he sees a woman leave the bar, get in her car, and go by herself. So he gets in his car, Grand Prix, mm. and he follows her home. 
Well, he didn't know she lived in Austin. So luckily he had some gas. So he followed her. All, that's where I'd be out because I'd have done run out of gas because I He's never like, have gas. Oh my gosh, how far are Where's we going? Live? I mean, that's is not a quick drive. Houston? This he probably is didn't not a know. quick drive. This is at least, what, two hours? I don't even know. Probably, at least. Well, she was a UT student. She lived in an apartment complex down there. And he snuck up behind her when she was on her way he to her was apartment. Dedicated she was to her. Walking by the pool. <gasps> and he attacked her, but she fought back and they both fell into the pool. And now he found a new way to kill because he just pressed oh, her head down in the water. No. And he didn't fall into that stereotype because I guess he knew how to swim. <laughs> it would have been like it's black people do <laughs> not know like, how to swim. She was like, Oh, he's black, let's jump in the pool. Yeah. But he knew how to swim. So um, she died and the police, she was found the next morning and the Austin PD ruled it an accident. I guess they thought, thought that she, she was drunk and fell in the pool. And fell in the pool because she didn't oh have any other like signs Scratches of or anything under her nails. Is, does stuff go away if, if you're in I'm water? I'm sure it washed out. Oh my What? Gosh. Yeah, what kind of evidence would they find? Well, they could look under the nail, fingernails because you're always supposed to scratch somebody. Yes. You're always supposed to get stuff under your nails. But if she was in the water and then all if she night, she had it was like, gone. but I wonder if like, I don't know. I guess if, she, if there's scratches on her. Mm. But I guess yeah. that dissolves. You I don't know that they dissolve. even fought. Everything, you're, <laughs> it's gone. you got some wrinkly fingers and your wrinkly scratches are devolve, dissolving. So just one week later, he finds Elizabeth and she's walking her dogs like a good dog mom would. Oh, no. And her Talk neighbor hears a scream and he runs over there and she's dead. One single stab wound what? straight through the heart. With and his like wooden? nobody <clears throat> sees anything. Like he's that fast. Stab gone so basically all you need to be is a Fast. sprinter and you can kill get away millions of people a million people same night a couple hours later he runs into Susie. He, she's walking into her home she he pushes her inside attacks her and kills uh, stabs her nine times with her own kitchen knife pushes her in her own kitchen, grabs her own knife, and stabs her nine times. So, like, he's just like, sure, let, I'll just choke this time. I'll stab this time. I'll strangle this time. Like, Can we go back really quickly to the dog, and I wonder what kind of dog it was. I don't know. Obviously, it was a tiny little Yorkie, and it was not a dog that Probably. was aggressive. Because I was like, your dog usually would, like. Yeah. That yeah. would usually it had to be a little dog. That would usually deter yeah. somebody from attacking. I but would anyways, too. Yeah. 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 Good, good call. So um, here's the thing. This is Houston, and these murders just aren't that big of a deal because, like Detroit, there's a lot of crime and a lot of things are going on. So they're just kind of falling by the wayside to everybody mm -hmm. else. But that detective, Bostock, was like, he didn't leave. He's still here because this fits the M.O. that of all this paperwork that he, uh, Michigan guy sent me. So... He's like, let me find him, let me find him. And he finds him and he puts a tracker on Coral's car, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, he's got him. Guess what? What? Coral ain't tracker. no Willy Foo Foo. Oh my all. God. He finds the tracker, keeps the tracker on there, and goes and pays cash for a Dodge minivan. And that's what he uses now to do his deeds in that oh car. She's sitting my. there. Were they not watching him, I guess? Not good enough. They were relying on the tractor. On the tracker. <laughs> on the tractor. <laughs> oh, my God. Pay cash for it. There's not even, like, any paperwork linked up. So, one girl was found hanging from a tree from her own tank top. Another girl was choked and stuffed into her own trunk. He would kill 10 more women while this short little time in Houston Three of them live, um, and he killed them all in a variety of ways, okay? Here's his last, and they some of them were happening like hours apart. But here's the end. He's only going to have three more victims. Oh, <laughs> Imagine that. But these are, these, these are different. So he runs into Michelle Mayday. She just got home and he snuck up on her, like going into her house. I bet you'll look over your shoulder every time you walk in your house now because he, that's how he would catch them. Like you're home, you're safe, but you're really not. He snuck her in. She, he took her into her own bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
ran the bath water and I guess he liked drowning the UT students. Oh yeah. So he drowned her in her own bathtub. Her mom found her the next morning. She lived on her own, but I guess mom came to visit and um that's how she was found. Oh my god. Good thing that I'm too big to be drowned in my bathtub. <laughs> Speaking of, my uh, my friend was like, who's listened to all our episodes, she was like, oh, no. let me see this Caroline. She doesn't have Facebook. And I was like, oh, you, know you don't when know you, Caroline? You know when you picture somebody based on yeah. their voice and you have, n- like, it's always she completely was like, wrong. That's not what I pictured. And I was like, what'd you picture? Well, she's always talking about how big she is. And I was like, because she's six feet tall. So I guess she's pictured you as like a lineman. <laughs> 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 she can fit in a bathtub, y'all. She's just too long. Yeah, I'm just too long. <laughs> I'm long and lanky. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So she killed May. He killed May Day in the bathroom. Twenty four hours later, he was like, "Let me get a two for." Oh hell! Hit back on that. Two for one. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two for, for one. one. They are roommates, Lori and Melinda, roommates, and and he sneaks up on Lori as she's walking in, and. Uh, ask Lori, where's her roommate at? And she goes, my roommate's not here. She's not here, right? Then roommate Melinda walks out of the shower and startles Coral. So she screams, and so Coral leaves Lori there and attacks Melinda and is choking her. Well, Melinda's smart because she's like, let me go limp and play unconscious. Yeah, yeah. So she did, and it worked. And... As she's laying there, her eyes are like squinted because she's like, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He goes back towards Lori. She says she remembers him like jumping up and laughing and like clapping because he's so excited. He's about to get two kills. Mm. So she he grabs Lori, takes her to the bathroom, runs the bath water. And Melinda was like, I got to go. So she jumps out of her window, but she ain't on the first floor. 20 feet down, she lands, and she runs to a neighbor's, and they call the cops. And I feel like the cops were, like, next door, basically, because the cops get there so quick. And um, he's running down the stairs when the cops are coming up. Well, he's faster than them. So he takes off. They run for a little bit, and they catch him. And when they catch him, they are finally able to officially arrest him. My gosh. So now he is in Houston PD Police Department. Say yay. Yes. Uh, Listen, I want to know how this... Uh, is she, does Linda or whatever say, does she do like parkour? Is she like jumping off the roof? I the- know she said that she was hurt, but she didn't feel it because you were yeah, like you got adrenaline. all your adrenaline yeah. going. Yeah. So she um, and Lori actually lived. Like the cop went up there, and how does a cop not know CPR? He didn't do CPR. He like beat her in the back of her neck. <laughs> what? And but she it worked. <laughs> she spit up all the water and she's alive. Well, there you go. I know. So forget CPR. Just beat him on the back of the neck. He was doing infant CPR. <laughs> I don't know what that what was. What you do on the infants? Pat him <laughs> on the back of the neck. Yes. Okay. So now he's in the jail. And so it's like, oh, yeah, we got him. We got him. But do they really? Oh, do not. What crime did they really catch him in? A murder crime. Attempted murder. Okay, so attempted murder. There we go. So they're like, let's get him. Let's get him. We know he did all these killings, right? We caught him in the act, but nobody died. So it's Texas justice system. Oh, my god. And so gosh. they decide. They got a plan. They're like, we're not going to prosecute. We're going to give him a deal. <laughs> take a shot because listen to this deal i can't <laughs> about the, the deal is I'm gonna he's look going up. to get immunity don't read it he's going to get immunity for all of his murders why if he confesses oh so they want him to confess to every murder okay. that he did in houston and he would have immunity but they will try him for burglary with intent to kill because he forced his way into the house Mm -hmm. and he tried to kill Lori, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, oh, yeah, this is Texas. This is as good as I'm going to get. He will get 60 years, but that's better than the death penalty to Coral. Put the phone up. She's I'm cheating, listening. Y'all. No, I'm looking. <laughs> I didn't. It says he's he was MR, but I didn't. 
IQ 75. Well, I know. Well, I don't yeah. know what that means. Um, so, but he ain't. He was smarter, a lot smarter than the well, number said. Listen, I probably have an IQ of three, <laughs> but I don't, I'm not uh, MR, but yeah, like I'm not super smart, but like, yeah. Now we call that intellectual know, disability, some, but oh, he, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I see. <clears throat> I don't know that he would really be that these days. I don't, yeah. I think he was a lot smarter than that, but. So listen, immunity have, for the you can dis- be not very smart, and you can have like your street smarts. Yeah, like you don't yeah. have to be like into you know like, like academically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go ahead. So immunity for all these, but if he if they try him for this burglary, that will be sixty years. So the police are like, that's a win. He's thirty. He'll have to do sixty years without the possibility of parole. Yeah, he'll be ninety. Like he'll be dead. Yeah. So he'll basically die of prison. That's fair enough. And he's like, at least I'm not going to get electric chair or whatever they did back then. <laughs> so he confesses to 12 murders in Texas. Oh, he does. He does. He tells them all that's how we know, like all the ones to actually put on him and not like somebody else. Yeah. So here's the problem. When it comes down to try him for the burglary, you have to have a deadly weapon. What's his deadly weapon? The wood stick. He didn't have it with him. He didn't attempt to stab anybody. Nobody cut, testified about a wooden stick. He tried to kill him in the bathtub. Oh, hell. So the justice system does not recognize a bathtub as a deadly weapon. Well, water. <laughs> so they cannot have the intent to kill. They have them as burglary only and so his status moved to non to violent criminal to non-violent criminal but he's still going to jail and he still is is going to be in jail for a long time like he does like 20 something years but texas justice system this is some kenneth mcduff type stuff oh my gosh back then if you're a non-violent criminal and you have like overcrowding of prisons you are able to every Day that you serve in prison, that you don't get in trouble, it's a good day, you get three days off your sentence. That makes no sense. (laughs) It at least needs to be reversed. Like, why are you even sentenced this certain amount if you're not even, I mean, I do not understand it, which I don't understand a lot of things, but I (laughs) really don't understand that. So he was an ideal prisoner, of course, because they know how to conform, and he starts racking up. Three days, three, every, so, I mean, how many, each week you serve is 21 days off your sentence. So can you see how, like, he can rack some days up? Mm -hmm. So he's supposed to be paroled in 2006. This is what happens whenever they start putting in somebody who's, like, like, smoked weed, and they busted them smoking weed, and they're putting them in there for, like. Yeah, they're in jail, yeah. Years and years, and then you have these crazy murder people who are getting out. In yeah. like three days. Because there's too many people in jail for weed. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, okay, so he, so they're like, he cannot get out in 2006. Like, we can't do this. We did this a couple years ago at Kenneth McDuff. We hadn't heard the end of it. Like, he is not. He, we cannot do this again. And then Michigan up there, they're pissed, right? Because they never got to try him for all the shit he did up there. Yeah. So they're like, you know what? He didn't have we to- didn't sign an immunity deal for Michigan's murders. Did he not talk about those murders? No, because oh. they kept it to Texas. You know, we Texas, we are only, we're only oh worried about gosh. what happens in our state. <laughs> so the, he only, the immunity deal was for Texas yeah. only, which was good because now Michigan can come and finally try to prosecute him for the murders that he did when he but was in Detroit. But they didn't have any evidence. And so it's like, well, what do you have now that you didn't, didn't have, have earlier? There? Yeah. Well, they found a witness. The girl's name who I told you to write down, Helen. Helen May Doucher. Oh. Dutcher. <laughs> Dutcher. <laughs> Dutcher. She was the one that was found at the cleaners. Cleaners. Somebody saw her getting attacked and killed and he saw the killer and the killer's eyes so this guy comes forward so he didn't just say he was a tram black man with a hoodie with scary eyes with scary eyes yes okay. and it and so i guess this this one counts this now one. 30 years later what the hell so he stands trial 
he's found guilty for one murder of oh my God. <laughs> Helen May Dutcher. It's ridiculous. That's why we're laughing. It's oh. like, oh my God, this is this is so dumb. He relieved. He received a life sentence, though. So yay, yay. He will spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole, except for he gets <laughs> cancer. He died of prostate cancer. I just looked it up <coughs> a couple months later, and I was like, Caroline's gonna be pissed. A couple of months. A couple he months just later. Died in a, after a couple of months. <coughs> yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. But here's the worst part to me. He admitted to 12 murders. He later claimed to have done over 40. But if they look at what they think his pattern was, there's really close to 90 victims that he could have had. I cannot. So literally one of the most legit prolific serial killers who nobody's ever heard about nobody's ever heard of who is on the b team though he was probably never on the b team in his life because he's a great athlete absolutely serial killer b team why i mean this is a crazy story it's by oh my gosh it's crazy so he was okay he was only in how long was he in jail before he died? So I think he did like 23 years before they like okay. moved him to Well, at least Texas. he was in there I mean, first. Yeah. A few. I thought he was in there for like three days. No, that. no. I was about to be. At well, least he did like 23 years. Okay. Then he went to Michigan and only did a couple months. Do people, when they get cancer in prison, do they get like. They do. They can get care. They can't. Okay. Yeah, but they're probably not the best of the best of the care. But the thing like, is, they is like, like how quickly do they find it? Because you just don't get checkups. I mean, do you go to the doctor? Yeah. Person? You do? Yeah, if you have a reason, they have to. So they found out he had it, but it was just, just probably too late. Um, what is, probably we pay for that. I'm sure we Yeah, I'm sure. That. Yeah. So that is Coral. Oh, my. Eugene. Coral, Carl. Can you listen? That was his problem. He didn't even know his name. He didn't know his first name. Now he's getting tag teamed. Who's tag team in, in Hale? David Parker Ray. Is David Parker Ray still alive? I can't remember. No, no. David Parker not. Ray, Ariel Castro, and Dean Coral are ta- all tag team. Yes, they are. Coral Watts right now. It's like on the uh, American Horror Story where they have the, they have like a dinner and it's oh, like all yeah. the killers. Mm-hmm. Oh, my god! No, but they're tag team. Like they're. Oh, and they're waiting on Joseph, too, to join them. I wrote that down. Oh, my gosh. On I can't Fritzl. believe that. Yo, Joseph Fritzl's probably going to be like, he's going to get there, and he's going to be like, listen up, bitches. I'm in charge <laughs> now. I'm in charge. I'm in charge now. I, I got the longest one. I got 24 years with my daughter. Yo, God. Can you yeah. beat me? It's the worst. The worst, I the worst. I can't. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, there is story number two for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it a little bit, and because just get your... Palette ready because Caroline's going to bring you another one next week. Another yeah. serial killer. Our goal is to find one that you maybe have not heard about I or you don't know too much about. This next one, you've not heard. Okay. Oh, I don't guarantee because you may, but I mean, I hadn't heard of it. And she is not even telling me. She's just surprising me on the spot. And I kind of like it, but I don't like it. I don't, I don't know. Get ready. I like being in the know. Can I just tell you one thing about him? Yeah. He's a cannibal. Ooh. We got a cannibal. Oh, man. I'm already excited. I hope you guys are too. Bloodies, hey, what do y'all need to do? You need to email us story suggestions. We're about to start a new year, <gasps> yes. and we're planning next year. Wait, is this gonna be these this is gonna be November when this comes out, right? Yeah. 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 It is November now and it's gonna be November. Oh, it then. is November. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna come out next week. <laughs> so December is gonna be very rogue. So it's just gonna be anything. I'm thinking this is what I was thinking, like maybe I'm gonna do some scam story or like a scam Random. story. And then that's all I thought about actually. But okay. uh but yeah, ideas and suggestions would be great. Yeah, because um, sometimes we just can't even think about it. Um, and then tell all your friends, send them this week's episode that just came out. Yeah, if or, you send one friend or five, no, ten. Let's okay, ten. Send them the episode and just say, hey, 
listen if you want to listen to this it's great <laughs> say it just <laughs> that's like all that. you have to that say is <laughs> so convincing yes 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 okay so thanks for tuning in um don't forget to stay aware stay alive and always be dtm bye y'all bye guys This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about, Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff oh golden age stuff is always the best and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness of everything that's right so subscribe today and uh, follow us on instagram at bros bros heroes and if you don't i know where you live not really but please subscribe (laughs) bros and bros and heroes Gonna tell you about bros and foes and heroes. Gonna Gonna tell tell you about. Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Blah podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> <sighs>